We've got our fifth third-party Famicom publisher, and it's DBSoft? Most people who got on board with the Famicom early went on to be major game companies. DBSoft, well, they released six Famicom games early in the system's lifespan, and then they found their real market in making, um, well, violent porn games that caused a national outrage. I'm never talking about those games, so let's talk about Flappy instead. Flappy shared the top spot with Excite Bike for the most expensive Famicom game. And Flappy earned that price. It is the largest Famicom cartridge to date, with a full 512 kilobits, or 64 kilobytes, of ROM. Almost every other Famicom game so far has been 24 kilobytes. So it's a big game, and the cart and the box tell you proudly how large it is, with 240 levels. It's actually 200 levels long, with 40 bonus stages. But considering that even Hudson's giant games have had 50 stages, this one's a big one. Flappy started out on the PC-88 platform. You can kind of tell since it has the slow, methodical puzzle game elements that were popular on computer platforms at the time. As for how it plays, Flappy is like if the box-pushing game Sokoban and the boulder-rolling game Boulder Dash had an affair and put the child up for adoption. The goal on every stage is to get the blue boulder onto the blue platform. You can push, but not pull, the boulders. Also, while Flappy and the monsters trying to stop her can move freely around the level, everything else is affected by gravity. So pushing a boulder off an edge causes it to fall. A useful thing to know is that boulders can be pushed in half-step increments. Getting things to stack in those half-steps is crucial to most levels. The other thing to know about boulders is that you can destroy them. If you push them into a wall or against a monster, they will get crushed. The blue boulder can never be crushed, though. You'll often find yourself using a boulder as a bridge and then having to crush it afterwards to open up the path again. The monsters in Flappy are a bit unusual. They have behavior patterns, but they also have a bit of random walk to them. The green unicorns can only move horizontally. So they tend to wander back and forth in an area. The crabby abelors attempt to go straight to Flappy. But that random walk sometimes gets in the way and they'll kind of drift off but sometimes that also lets them get out of an area that they're trapped in and come after you. To deal with them, Flappy can pick up some magic mushrooms. The mushrooms can be thrown in any direction, but after they hit a surface, they fall down. Enemies struck by a mushroom fall asleep. A difference between the computer version and the Famicom version is that in the Famicom version, the enemies can be pushed. That's useful since you can push them under where a boulder will fall and squish them. Of course, it's possible to squish yourself, too, if you're not careful. Each stage has a timer, but you don't need to think about it too much. You could always just pause the game, and then you have all the time in the world to think of a solution. If you ever render a puzzle unsolvable, then you'll need to hold down Start and Select at the same time. You'll lose a life, but you can try again. That brings me to the most frustrating thing about Flappy, the password system. You have five lives when you start the game, and after you complete five stages, a bonus stage occurs. On the bonus stage, you have to chase down enemies and hit the A button to eliminate them. And once you complete that bonus stage, you get a password. Now, you might think that that password will let you continue from where you left off. It does not. It lets you choose any of the five previous stages to start at. So, you complete the bonus stage at level 6, get the password, 
and you can choose if you want to start at levels 1 through 5. That does mean you need to complete the 5th level again, then the bonus stage again, and then you can start the new levels. And because you only have 5 lives to complete everything, it can be pretty nerve-wracking when you're on that 5th stage and have 1 life left. A lot of the levels do require that the enemies behave themselves. The aggressive movements of Abilor in particular can really get you. So there's times where you'll lose a life just due to sheer bad luck. When the game was released, DBSoft had a contest where players could send in passwords in order to get a prize. Just a little card signifying that they completed a certain number of stages. There were four of these in all. The problem for DBSoft is that all of the passwords were published in a magazine shortly after the game was released. That wasn't the only time that a magazine caused problems with Flappy either. Another magazine printed a fake trick where you could shoot mushrooms around the blue boulder on level 51 to trigger a special event. Obviously that does nothing, but it really worked up kids in 1985. Flappy is a game that has a reputation in Japan as a hidden gem for the Famicom. I'm not so sure about that myself. Even setting aside the rough graphical presentation, there's enormous variance in the difficulty of the stages. A lot of the stages are dependent upon those randomized enemy movements lining up just right. And that password system is a real mess. And then there's the music. You get your choice of three songs, but they're all unpleasant. Still, with those caveats, I think this is a solid mid-range puzzle game. If someone asked me what are the best hidden gems on the Famicom, it wouldn't even come up in my top 20. But it's fine for what it is. I think in preference though, I'd play the Game Boy port. I tend to find this kind of game better on the go.